Far out in the vastness of space, deep inside the Earth's molten core, beyond the confines of time, of reality, of imagination, this is where you'll find us. These are the Worlds of Tomorrow. Welcome to the very first episode of The Worlds of Tomorrow. Uh, my name is Kyle Anderson, um, and thanks for downloading this. Uh, it's, a, it's an unproven product because it's the first episode, and I'm a nobody. This is going to be a podcast all about science fiction, um, all about science fiction movies and television and books and comic books, and uh, and just kind of about the ideas that they in, elicit in people. Uh, it's a genre that is constantly about thought and ideas and about people doing things and, you know, striving for excellence or it can be. It's also about the dangers of unchecked aggression and unchecked, uh, you know, bad things and pollution and everything like that. Um, science fiction is, is all encompassing. And uh, so this podcast is going to be about that. The way this is going to work, it's going to be kind of free flowing. Um, there's going to be at the very least two episodes per month. The first one is going to be kind of a discussion episode. And then the second episode is going to be a, a, a commentary of a TV show or a movie or whatever. Um, th- that kind of illustrates the concepts that we talk about in the first episode. Does that make sense to anybody? Um, hopefully it does. It's, it's going to be, sometimes it'll just be me like this one is. <laughs> Just why I'm struggling. Um, sometimes it'll be me and a guest. Sometimes it'll be me and multiple guests. Um, we'll probably have a few sub series within that. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's just going to kind of go all over the place. It's going to be everything uh, having to do with science fiction, and hopefully, it's it's going to be fun for everyone to listen to. And because I, I like talking about that stuff, of course. Why wouldn't I love talking about big ideas and things that you know, I wish could happen in my lifetime, but clearly have not, you know, it's, it's 2015. It's nothing like what back to the future two is like right now. So, and that makes me sad. Uh, it should be exactly like what back to the future two is <laughs> right down to the crappy 3d jaws thing that comes out and hoverboards. Everyone is so concerned about these damn hoverboards. I think somebody made one. Hoverboards are apparently a thing that everybody wants to have. Um, are we all going to have hoverboards? Also, I want to point out something about Flying cars. Everybody wants flying cars like in Back to the Future 2. Flying cars would be terrible. We do not want flying cars in our life. So you know how bad people drive? I live in Los Angeles. You know how bad people drive? Imagine all of that above your head at any given moment. If somebody gets in a crash, is that just going to fall on your house? I don't understand why people think this is a good idea. Um, low-flying airplanes at, at 100 feet in the air. T- horrible. Anyway. Um... Well, who am I and what am I talking about? My name is Kyle Anderson. I think I've already said that. Um, I'm a film critic. I'm a writer. Um, I'm a fan. And um, I'm I'm a weird guy. So I think all of those things put together make me the perfect person to take you on a journey through the worlds of tomorrow. Science fiction is kind of, it's in my blood. Uh, I think it's in a lot of our bloods. It, I think it's, it's part of me. Growing up... I, it was what my imagination was based upon. Um, as I've gotten older, I still find ways for it to make me feel like a kid. I, you know, we get lost in science fiction. We get swept away by the scope of its ideas, um, by the grandeur of its vistas, and, and we get galvanized by its, its you know, often very human storytelling. That's something, uh, if you'll forgive me, genre mashing, that's the magic of sci-fi. Um, I, I just love it. Um, there was a time when I didn't, though. Um, or at least I... There was a time when I didn't let it show too much. I remember pretty vividly making a short film with my brother and some friends um, when I couldn't have been more than 10. Uh, it was a it was a version of Star Trek using a toy Starship Enterprise that I placed on our blue carpeted floor. And we would turn the lights off. Uh, and then I had a flashlight. And so we made... That's what I filmed was a flashlight on a toy. And that was Space the Final Frontier. And then we would cut, you know, in-camera editing to a bridge that I had built out of our dining room set. Not like a, you know, drive over bridge, but the bridge of the enterprise. Um, 
as best we could with the dining room furniture that we had. And uh, I would be the captain, obviously, because I was the only one who understood or had even seen Star Trek, I think. Um, and also it was my camera. So that's that was what I was doing. And it, and uh, and I couldn't have been more than 10, but that was, you know, I was thinking about traveling through space and all that. And, and I equally remember the following year where my family bought... The first time we bought on glorious VHS tape through the Columbia House Record Club, uh, all three unspecial edition Star Wars movies. Uh, Return of the Jedi was only about 12 years old at this point, a year older than me, um, which makes me feel very old and seems very strange to me that there was a time when I was alive when Return of the Jedi was only a couple years old. And that's weird to me now thinking back because I, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of any of it until I was about 12. Um, and I have a lot of memories of watching each of those movies. Um, the first time all my family all sat down and we watched them one, one each day for three days. And I was just like in awe of all of it. And it was weird because it was kind of in the zeitgeist. It was in my brain, even though I had never seen it before. I just kind of knew everything or a lot of it. You know, Luke, I am your father. I knew who all the characters were just through osmosis, basically. Um, or diffusion, if we're going to be very scientific about it. And I, re- I just remember laying on the floor, looking up at the at the space battles and the laser fights and, you know, Wookiees and things like that, and just being swept away and how much I loved it. And every time it was on television, I would make sure to watch, if, for whatever reason, USA Network used to play all three of them in a row all the time. Um, and I remember one time the end of uh, Empire was on when I was at my grandma's house. And so we were leaving, and so there was just enough time to get from my grandma's house, about half an hour away, back to watch Return of the Jedi just as they got to Endor. And I thought, okay, I, I, can, handle, <laughs> I can handle missing the Jabba stuff. I would never do that now, by the way. The Jabba stuff's the best part of that movie. But these are the movies that stuck with me. All through, I watched all the special editions, um, which I know are travesty to a lot of people, but, you know... As, as a 13 year old it got me excited I, I went to the movies to go see all of them um i remember going to see uh empire strikes back with uh my dad and my grandpa when it was in the, the this brand new state-of-the-art theater with thx sound and everything and that was it was amazing to me and i remember at and i remember at that same theater when i was going to see with them the same I, my dad and my grandpa went to go see star trek first contact was the first time I ever saw the trailer for the special edition of Star Wars. And my brain was just like, yes, these are things I love. And yeah, I even liked The Phantom Menace when it came out. I didn't realize until much later how terrible it was. Uh, I know that a lot of people hated it right away, but it took me a while to realize how stupid it was. <laughs> um, there's still something about The Phantom Menace that I enjoy. It's better than it's better than Attack of the Clones, I think we can all agree, right? Right? Let's all agree on that. Uh, that same year when I was in high school, something weird happened. Um, I, I'm a pretty big guy. Um, I'm I'm 6'3 currently. I was about this height, a little shorter when I was in a freshman in high school, but I was a lot heavier. I won't tell you how much I weigh now or then, but uh, just suffice to say, I was, I was a big fat guy. Um, and for some reason, the school gods had deemed it important that my school locker be in the gym hallway of the high school. So uh, I didn't go over there very often because... Uh, it was not my area. I was I was much more a music music side of the the school person. So all the time, you know, I'd have to go and inter- interact with jocks, which you know these are not people who get me it at all. Um, one day, a big a big senior guy, a big football player, came up to me and he said, "Hey man, you're you're a big guy. You should uh, you'd, you'd make a decent lineman. Are you going to try out for the football team?" And I uh, was a was a, sh- a shy big guy, and uh, so I kind of looked down. And I said, oh, oh, no, I don't I don't think so. And then he said, real derisively, he looked right at me and he said, why, because you like Star Wars? And I was wearing a Star Wars t-shirt at the time, so I guess it was a valid question. Um, but I lacked, the, I lacked the confidence at the time to respond with any other way than to fill my face with blood, uh, to look at the floor and say no, and then run away real slowly because I was fat. Um, but I think now, looking back on that, if, if I were posed with this question with the brain that I have now uh, as a 15 or 14 year old, I probably would have said, uh, yeah, yeah, kind of. 
I think my liking Star Wars is exactly why I'm not going to try out for the football team. One, the chances of me getting seriously injured are much lower while sitting at home watching Star Wars. Uh, two, I don't have to shower with a bunch of sweaty dudes. Uh, and three, all the shitty people in Star Wars get shot with a laser gun or thrown into a Sarlacc pit. So that's the kind of world I want to live in. And I was ashamed of, of liking sci-fi and liking Star Wars for a really long time and kind of had to hide it. And even when I was in college a little bit, um, you know, it, it, nerds were not as cool then <laughs> as they are now. And they're only moderately cool now, everyone. And there was some time around the release of episode three, which was in 2007, uh, six or seven, I forget which, uh, I kind of stopped caring about science fiction, um, at least to the point that I had when I was younger. Um, it just kind of, sci-fi just became a word that meant big, big summer blockbuster. That's kind of all it was. Um, you know, I'd go see them, but with a few exceptions like The Matrix, um, uh, even though those sequels are not very good, um, I just kind of didn't care about sci-fi movies anymore or sci-fi anything. I had long stopped watching any Star Trek and I, you know, uh, Star Wars had just kind of betrayed me a little bit. Uh, and so I, do, I dove into horror. I was a big horror guy for a long time. Um, I watched when I was in college, I basically watched every zombie movie that could possibly be watched by a human being. Um, all the weird Italian ones where with weird, like Freudian stuff in it. Um, that's for another podcast entirely. Um, and so I'd watch all of those and I would kind of just, you know, go out of my way to try to scare myself. And then in 2009, as many of you will know, if you are friends of mine or have listened to other podcasts that I've done, um, on a whim, I I watched, I was bored at home before I went to work one day and I watched an episode of a little show that was on demand called Dr. Who. Um, it was an episode written by Paul Cornell, um, from series one of the 2005 update and it was entitled Father's Day. I had no context for who the doctor was or what really the hell was going on. Um, uh, I didn't know who Rose Tyler was. I didn't know why at the beginning of the episode uh, she was talking to her mom or talking about her mom and then her dad. I knew nothing about this. Um, but despite it, I watched it. And uh, and yes, the the budget was very obvious. And it was that weird kind of super grainy SD video that was only around in Britain in the mid-2000s and the the CGI was as janky as possible. But the episode was all about ideas, and it was about the perils of time travel, and it was about heroism and choosing to do the heroic thing, and it was about family. And this kind of stuff really blew my mind, because I hadn't seen anything that wasn't just big, you know, schlocky sci-fi in a really long while. Um, and, and little by little, I just started watching more and more of the series until a few years later, um, not even that long, really. <laughs> several months later, I had become basically a hopeless devotee of the series. Um, but, but even more than just a devotion to Dr. Who, I, I'd kind of once again, given myself over to the ethos of science fiction, that there's something science fiction can do that other genres cannot. Um, as much as I love horror films and Westerns and spy movies and stuff like that, a, a good space adventure or a time travel epic or a dystopian thriller, it just can't, it's unto- untouchable for me. The, the amount of care and thought and everything that can go into a really, really well-crafted story, speculative fiction, it's it's the top top of the charts for me, top of the pops. And the, though there are certainly some dark and disturbing sci-fi movies out there that are wonderful and worth talking about, what I love most about the genre is just how it makes me feel like a kid again. Uh, and that's where this podcast is really going to start, with the kind of science fiction that makes me feel like that 10-year-old kid playing with the Starship Enterprise or Luke Skywalker on a speeder bike. Uh, Star Wars is undoubtedly a huge, huge piece of science fiction, and uh, Worlds of Tomorrow, here, this podcast, we're going to talk a lot about that. We're going to be spending a lot of time in a galaxy far, far away. But to begin with, I want to focus on a movie that I only discovered a few years ago that I hadn't even heard of until it came out on DVD and Blu-ray, but one that, uh, maybe even more than Star Wars, strangely, has made me feel like a kid again. Um, That movie is the Roger Corman-produced 1980 space adventure, Battle Beyond the Stars. Uh, now, I would never sit here and tell you that Battle Beyond the Stars is a great movie. Um, it's got some major problems, to be sure. Um, but there's just a sense of fun about the story. It's got a lot of excellent characters, and the special effects, though super cheap, I think rival some of the bigger production houses of the time. Um, so in, in our next episode, uh, this is the end of this episode. Uh, in the next episode, I'm going to be doing a commentary of Battle Beyond the Stars, um, a movie that features a script by John Sayles, Uh, visual effects by James Cameron, and a score by the late, great James Horner. 
Um, I think it's a great movie in the way that a crappy 80s sci-fi movie can be great. Um, so that's what the next episode is going to be. It's going to be me doing a commentary of Battle Beyond the Stars and uh, and just kind of getting all into it, talking about the, the you know all the different themes that it plays with and, and kind of talking about the, the effects and the music and, and the cast and just why, why I think it's a really fun movie um, and why I think parts of it really don't work. Um, and that's what I love most about movies and about sci-fi is, is picking it apart. <laughs> I am a nitpicker and it's fun. Um, the movie used to be streaming on Netflix. It is no longer streaming on Netflix, unfortunately, but it is available to stream on a, a, a website that rhymes with shmoo shmoob. So you should be able to watch it there. Uh, the version I'm watching is uh, is going to be 104 minutes, and so there is there are two. If you search for it on Uh two of them pop up. One's 139 minutes or an hour 39, and the other one's an hour 43. I'm going to be watching the one that's an hour 43. So you should be able to find that. Thank you all for listening to this episode. Hopefully, uh, the next episode won't be so self reflecty which I can't imagine it will be. Thank you for indulging me on uh, uh, talking about my childhood a little bit and about why I love science fiction. Um, and uh, and yeah, next next time, which will be in about a week or two, uh, it'll be a, a commentary of Battle Beyond the Stars. Uh, you can get a hold of me. Uh, I'm at Functional Nerd on Twitter. Um, I haven't set up a email account or a Twitter account for this podcast yet, but I probably will by time this goes out. So if that's the case, I will add it to the end. Thank you for listening. Until next time, keep looking up at the stars. That's probably not going to be the sign-off. Bye. Contact this podcast at worldsoftomorrowpod at gmail.com and twitter.com slash worldstmrrwpod. Thank you. This concludes our transmission. Transmission.